The period panel is sponsored by Active Iron. Use the code HERSPORT30 on their website, www.activeiron.com to get 30% off. So today on the period panel, we have Claire from Homeless, Homeless Period Ireland, and we are going to have a little bit of a chat. I think the best thing is to first give, a pe- give people a quick overview of what exactly that you do. Okay, so Homeless Period Ireland is a volunteer initiative. Um, it's run entirely volunteer and voluntarily. So it's myself and a team of volunteer drivers. And basically what we do is um, collect and distribute period products to women in need. And that can be women in you know, direct provision, although that's changing. And um, that could be women in homeless situations and um, domestic abuse refuges, all, all manner of, of, of places, really. Um, but then also what I do as well with, with the platform that I have is to try and just, you know, really help break down stigma and shame, which sadly is still is associated with period. So that's kind of it in a nutshell. Tell us how you got involved with it in the first place. Um, I watched a film. <laughs> um, I watched a film called I, Daniel Blake, and um, it's set in the UK, and it's it's based around people who are living on welfare. And um, in one scene, there was a single mom, um, and she was caught shoplifting. And when she opened up her bag, inside was a packet of of pads or tampons. And um, yeah, it was just something I hadn't thought about before. So um, I kind of had a google and i realized yeah that this actually was an issue and it was an issue known as period poverty um so yeah just became a volunteer driver myself and then the girl who'd set up homeless period dublin um could no longer do it so i took it over and and just expanded it from there really so yeah it's coming into its fifth year now i think yeah mm-hmm. lost sense of time with our last year which has just disappeared <laughs> so yeah coming into around our fifth year this year yeah and tell us about the, the team of volunteers that you have. So obviously, if you've managed to bring it from Dublin to, you know, Homeless Period Ireland, it's a, yeah. an expansion that's happened and you're obviously supported by a great team. Um, yeah, like this is, this is actually, it's a very small team of us. I'm sitting at my kitchen table, which is um, HPI HQ. But yeah, it's just, it's really phenomenal. Um, like the support it gets, Neve, is just brilliant. So often people will just send me messages and say, they'd you know, they'd like to, to volunteer. And I'm kind of, I suppose, because I've built up such a network, you know, if I need a donation done in Cork, I'll have a contact in Cork and I can ring them mm-hmm. and go, look, can you do me a favour? So really it's it's very much a kindness based based initiative and you know people who are volunteering are are just hugely supportive and i suppose see have seen the need themselves for the product so are, are really keen to help out so yeah it's just mm-hmm. really done on, on on a kindness base mm-hmm. in relation to the stigma like that's obviously something that we cover a bit on her yeah. sport and we want to open the conversation in relation to you know periods is something that you know all women at some point in their life will have. So um, talk to us a little bit about what you've experienced uh, with that. Um, What I kind of see is that there is still kind of awkwardness around conversations. You know, people, you know, we we are all still, you know, at that stage where we will kind of hide the tampon up our sleeve or I've got my period, you know. And look, we don't have to shout and scream about them. But I think if you are in a situation um, where you've got, you know, bad period pain or, you know, that you can tell someone that you don't hide it. And, you know, people often feel that they have to say they have a headache, you know, or leave work early, say they feel sick for another reason over Mm -hmm. saying that they have their period so I think all these conversations are just really important that we have and again just leading it into sport you know often girls drop out of of sport at kind of puberty age because they come become conscious of it um so I think you know this uh, for for me I think what's really important is there's just an absolute lack of period education in this country Mm -hmm. and sex education let's be honest but um I think you know we really need to have conversations about about periods and particularly around you know and and particularly for girls who are partaking in 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 all kinds of sport as well it's Mm -hmm. hugely important yeah yeah no definitely even like when I think back of say the the conversation around periods at school it's very much kind of the scientific side of it and like this is what's going to happen but not necessarily the day-to-day how to deal with it um kind of situation and you know depending on the school or whatever you might come across the conversation a couple of times in your whole you know education cycle we'll say but um yeah the openness and and kind of the reality of what having your period means or some of the kind of day-to-day challenges that you might face um 
yeah, the, the, the open conversation is not really there. And I, and I know it's a, it's a, it can be a, an awkward topic for maybe, um, you know, people that have just got their period, but it's about, it's for the kind of educators to make them feel comfortable about having exactly. it and understanding that it's completely normal and, um, you know, everybody's going to have it at some point. Yeah. Um, in relation to kind of products being made accessible, I know yeah. we saw at, just towards the end of 2020, uh, that Scotland made the first move towards making period products free. Yeah. And in January of 2021, Ireland are proposing a bill uh, to provide free tampons, sanitary towels, reusable products in school bathrooms, educational institutions and public service bodies. Yeah. Can you tell us a bit, a bit more about that? I know obviously your ear to the ground is, is good in relation to yeah. this topic. And like, are we going to see a change? And what could this mean if it does go through? Um, well, in 2019, um, the Women's Caucus got together a cross-party motion, which I think was the first the first time um, this was done cross-party, and the motion in favour of period poverty passed in the Dáil, so that was 2019. So it was pretty quiet then between now and then, obviously, Scotland happened, New Zealand also happened. Mm -hmm. um, so then, yeah, our, our bill got put to in in the Shannad in, yeah, January. Um, so yeah, look, I am confident something will happen. Um, you know, it is in our program for government, and and you know there has been a lot of talk around it. So I really, really hope, it, you know, mm -hmm. it's actioned this year. I know there are a lot more. You know, there's a lot of stuff going on in our country at the moment, obviously with COVID and everything, and you know, it's it's not seen as a priority issue. But I think what we have to remember in the in all of this, you know, period poverty kind of sometimes when with its label people just think of it as periods but actually if you are experiencing period poverty you know it's a, it's only a, it's a facet of poverty right so you know that's what people need to focus on i think is is the whole bigger issue of poverty um and sadly that's going to impact a lot of people at the moment with with covid and job losses and all of that kind of thing like i know myself like i was speaking to someone in a food bank yesterday and um, the need for for all manner of hygiene products is is, mm -hmm. is is very big. The demand is big at the moment. So I think, look, you know, we just it it just needs to be actioned this year and done. And I know I think initially it is going to be, um, you know, in educational settings, which is great. But I think we need to go a bit bigger. And I think there just should be universal free access for mm -hmm. for everyone who needs them. Yeah, we actually, we did a, a release a video a couple of months back uh, talking about the additional kind of costs that women have and um, that we just yeah. completely take as normal. Yeah. And then when you actually kind of step back and you go, okay, well, I have to pay for period products, I have to pay for this, I have to pay for that. And you kind of realise all the kind of additional costs that particularly when it's something that is, you know, related to your period, which is not something that you can control. Yeah. Um, you're kind of wondering like how come we are actually paying for this because it's it's yeah. you know something that our um you know women didn't decide that they wanted no. them you know and i mean it can just be hugely frustrating i find you know with a lot of these conversations around period products and providing products and you know at the end of the day it's a normal bodily function um you know and they should just be in toilets as needed you know with, mm -hmm. with soap and with toilet tissue i mean you know it's it, as you say it's not by choice it's not a luxury so I can get really really frustrated when there's lots of talk about oh we are going to provide period products but we're going to do mm -hmm. sir we're going to do a survey first or we are going to um, provide period products but we're going to pilot it I find that really kind of actually find it slightly I think it's pretty insulting to people well in, in, in relation to a survey I mean <laughs> What are you going to like, do? You survey people you and ask them how many of you get your periods? Because we already well, exactly. know the answer. Exactly. I mean, it's it's just it's as far as I'm concerned, it's just absolutely ridiculous. Um, so yeah, I'm kind of I wasting mean, resources then as well. Totally a waste of time and a waste of resources. Like our per periods happen every single month. So while all these conversations are being had, there's women going without, and that's the way mm -hmm. I look at it. And um, yeah, so just just do it. Tell me, because I know we, we obviously spoke a little bit about it before, and um, you were saying how you know prevalent it is, but people don't even kind of realise that. And I know there's you know more people becoming aware of the situation, and and you know uh, people that don't experience it themselves completely take for granted that they can afford you know period products. And yeah. I guess because we don't really talk about the topic in general, and um, don't really give it much thought than kind of dealing with your own period and kind of moving on. Um, yeah. and, and not thinking about what other people are doing. So tell us how kind of common it is, because I know when you say period poverty, people think, um, you know, about 
the um, obvious you know, category. Yeah, 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 yeah. People yeah. that you know, we think of people that are that are homeless or in short term kind of living situations. And um, yeah. but you kind of had said before that it's a lot more prevalent than we realise. Yeah, because it's like very, you know, there's the obvious categories that you've just mentioned, but there's also, you know, what's forgotten is, you know, it can be the woman who at the end of the month doesn't have, you know, 20 quid or doesn't have 10 quid to go and get pads, or it could be someone who's in a coercive relationship where, you know, they're not in charge of their finances, or it could be a young girl who hasn't, you know, isn't having the conversations at home about periods and, you know, they're just not being discussed. So it's quite, it's, it's quite actually, it's quite a, it's quite a hidden issue. Um, mm -hmm. And I'm often, you know, again, I always bring this back to education, Eve, because also sometimes I, you know, when I people would send me thank you messages and I find that really kind of, I don't, you know, there's not, not that there's nothing nice about it, but I just find it incredibly sad, you know, where, you know, I might get a message from someone who said, you know, I haven't spoken to my mum about periods and, and I'm really grateful to have received them. And, you know, so again, it just kind of comes down to, I think, again, always hark back to education, but yeah. yeah. And in that situation, like, why are young girls maybe not having the conversation with their mom or somebody else in their life? Who knows? I mean, it's just kind of, it's, I mean, uh, again, this is something I've been talking about recently. I mean, often I think, you know, men are kind of easy targets to get blamed sometimes. But I think we all need to remember that, you know, most of us have been taught about our periods by, you know, our mothers, if, if you know, we're fortunate to have our mum. Um, but, yeah, so I think it's just passing down that kind of, don't talk about it, you know, yeah, just yeah. get on with it kind of thing. So maybe just people just, just can't bring it up at home for all yeah, manner yeah. of reasons. Yeah. Um, in relation to kind of education, I know you talked a bit about sports clubs and trying to kind yeah. of put them in different sports clubs. Tell us a little bit about that. Um. I work in a football club myself. Um, I'm club registrar with Granada FC in Black Rock, and something that we did is just put products in the toilet, not complicated, mm -hmm. nothing fancy. They're just there in the toilets for whoever needs them. Um, Shamrock Rovers, there's, I don't know if you saw that, you probably did actually, the On The Ball group who were based in yeah. Scotland. Um, they've actually just finished up recently, but I think that in the end, I think they got about 120 Premier League clubs involved in LA Galaxy. Um, just providing products in bathrooms. Um, Shamrock Rovers do it here, um, Bose, Derry City, Drada United. So again, and it's just not making it over complicated. I just think it's really, really good for girls, um, you know, whether they're training or um, at a match that, that they go into the toilet, there they are, and it's no big deal. Mm -hmm. And I know we had mentioned before in relation to some of the reusable products, such as, you know, period underwear and menstrual cups and stuff. Explain to people why these aren't often su suitable in the case of period poverty. Um, well, just again, you know, for, for homeless people who don't have access to their own bathrooms, boiling hot water, um, often, um, you know, women might be in shared accommodation, might be sharing bathrooms, may have suffered sexual trauma, um, and just actually just might not have the basic education, how to use them, how to learn to use them. You know, we all have the privilege of being able to to Google things from the comfort of our own home and look mm -hmm. up things in YouTube. Not everyone's in that position. Um, often, you know, and also, I mean, the obvious hygiene risk as well, you know, with yeah. infection. Um, and I, I mean, it's something I do bang on a lot about, but I really, really do hope that when the government do provide products that they will... Um, be sustainable products, you know, because before mm -hmm. COVID, you know, the other big C we were all talking about was climate, um, you know, so I think it's really, really important that we do start looking at um, sustainable products, because I don't know if you remember last year with the tampon ad, all the, the uproar over the tampon ad that was banned here, and... Uh, what you know, were your thoughts on that one? I mean... I didn't like the ad myself, but there, and one, one of the screaming reasons why I didn't like the ad was because in the middle of it was this plastic applicator, you know, the blue applicator, and it's just not needed. And in this day and age, I just I have a really particular bugbear with um, single-use plastic. So for, mm -hmm. for that reason, it annoyed me more than anything else. I mean, for yeah, that sake, yeah. you know, all ads around period products are just horrific. Um, you know, between blue blood and, you know, women in their white shorts playing tennis. I mean, they just, there's a few ones that have got better over the years, but in general, they're pretty, pretty awful. But, um, yeah, no, for me, the most annoying part about it was the single-use plastic. Mm -hmm. um, but I do, yeah, I think, look, you know, the government do need to step up there. And I think we have a really, really good opportunity to simultaneously tackle 
the issue of period poverty and um, single-use plastic together. So mm. hopefully that'll happen. Yeah. yeah, and even I was thinking, um, you know, kind of before the call and stuff that, you know, obviously some people are in the, the position where they can move towards period underwear and menstrual cups and then yeah. will find themselves with surplus uh, pads or tampons yeah. that they may not really go back to using. So tell us a bit about where people can maybe send, if they want to send you their surplus products that they're yeah. not using anymore. Because I think that is maybe a way that obviously um, people that have the means to use the reusable products can actually help people yeah. that, uh, you know, can't and, and need kind of support in accessing uh, period products. Well, under normal circumstances, um, what people could do would be to bring them to one of our drop-off points. But we do actually ask people not to donate, donate um, and we always have, I mean, even pre-COVID, not to donate opened boxes of products just okay. basically for hygiene reasons. Mm -hmm. So we do only accept, um, you know, sealed boxes that haven't been opened. Um, and in relation, you know, the way sometimes tampons are in kind of, I know we're talking plastic, but in their plastic seals okay. and stuff, yeah, yeah, they're yeah. okay? Okay, and pads they're, if they're in their plastic? Absolutely, Perfect. absolutely. Um, Maybe for after COVID, um, yeah. if people tune into your Instagram and keep up to date with yeah. what you're doing, they'll be able to... to um, maybe make donations at that point so do you want to tell us your instagram handle and where we yeah, can find sure. you yeah sure it's um at homeless period ireland on instagram it's the same on facebook and also on twitter and i have no no website it's all very grassroots and organic and yeah, yeah. uh but yeah i mean you know just keep an eye out because even if we if we do something about the poverty stage i think we'll, we'll continue and keep working on the educational mm -hmm. side of things yeah yeah, no, I think there's like going to be a lot of people that will be, you know, educated around what we're talking about. And I, I'm sure there's lots of people that will want to help in some, in some capacity. So at least they'll know where you are and, and how they can support. Um, do you want to talk a bit about the bandwagoning around? Oh, yeah. Okay. That? Yeah. Yeah, I'm sure. Why not? <laughs> um... Yeah, no, just something I was conscious of around Women's Day was there was a, a, a huge amount of conversations around um, period poverty. And I kind of think, you know, these conversations need to continue all year round. Um, mm -hmm. I think it's really great. I mean, I spoke to you earlier about the fantastic article that Joanna Reardon wrote in the Irish Times um, a, week, a few couple of weeks ago about, you know, um, the importance of, of menstruation cycles in in you know relation to training and I think there's people like Sinead Brophy go with the flow doing wonderful wonderful work on this so I think you know let's not just focus the conversations on this topic on one area um you know let, let's let's keep these conversations going because I think they're hugely important yeah yeah definitely and in relation to obviously you know a lot of our audience is, is interested in sport and we may have people yeah. that are in positions of um kind of authority within their clubs that, that might be able to make some changes so what would your suggestions be for sports clubs to help support this as you're saying a hidden issue that you know athletes or uh, you know whether it's it's children or adults may not actually be comfortable talking about but still want to participate in sport yeah, I think like, you know, it's a really, really good time for women's sport at the moment. And I think particularly in Ireland, I mean, I know it's finished up recently with the 2020 campaign. I just loved it. I think and what you're doing is, is phenomenal. Like, it's great. Um, and, you know, the, I, I have a lot of interest from from sports clubs, Belvedere uh, Rugby Women's Club have been hugely supportive. And as I mentioned earlier, you know, the football teams. But I think, mm -hmm. you know, there's so much more visibility now around women's sport, you know, with the little campaigns with, with the LGFA. And, you know, there's so much more visibility that I think we all have an opportunity just to make it all a bit normal, you know. So mm -hmm. if you are part of a sports club, just put pads in the toilet. It's not a big deal. It's not a big issue. Um, it doesn't need to be surveyed. It doesn't need to be quantified. It's just a tiny, tiny little gesture. And I think it just makes girls who see this as normal, it's normal. And, yeah. you know, we don't want girls dropping out of sport when they reach puberty. I mean, I have um, two daughters who are football mad. And I would hate to think that, you know, they gave up sport because they felt awkward or embarrassed or any sort mm -hmm. of shame. So I think, yeah, no, I think it's just all down to all of us um, who are anyway involved in sport. Just put them in the toilets. If you have toilets. Yeah, yeah. I mean, so many clubhouses don't have toilets yeah, but yeah. Um, for girls. But yeah. Yeah, I definitely think uh, small, small measures like that can really help in some clubs. And like you're saying, you know, it's um, it just makes it normal. And then hopefully yeah. as the years go on, 
the normality of talking about periods and everything would just and that's it I mean we won't even notice it we won't even notice it and that's it like you know it just gets so overcomplicated and all it boils down to is people putting pads in toilets or tampons or whatever you want to put in the toilet but that that's all it boils down to yeah, brilliant. The thing I think that's really annoying, oh my God, my hair, is that, <laughs> <laughs> is that, you know, with brands like tampons, those silky smooth applicators are designed to make our lives easier, right? But mm-hmm. they're not really good for the planet. And I think in this day yeah. and age, something needs to be done about that big time. Yeah, no, I think in relation to, um, you know, tampon products and stuff in general yeah. and to, to both tampons and pads because a lot of people are familiar with um tampons and with always and that's just yeah. kind of the brands that are out there and that people are kind of familiar with but the yeah. the plastic and the wrapping and everything on is there's a lot you know and i know there's obviously in every, in every uh box i know this is something that's kind of hard to get arranged but you obviously have like the instructions and kind yeah. of health and safety and stuff and um i don't know i'd love for there to be a way where we could kind of not every box needs that because some people are kind of past, they know yeah. what they're going in and, you know, piece of paper and they just throw it in the bin. But I know obviously it's a, a difficult thing. I don't know if you saw it up on my Instagram page, but Flossie and the Beach Cleaners, um, she's based in South County Dublin and does beach cleans. And um, a couple of the pictures I've tagged because I just like, oh God, um, you know, and it's washed up tampons on our shorelines mm-hmm. and pads. And, you know, I think people don't think before they flush and also you know that the, these products all contain plastic and I think that's mm-hmm. something that that is forgotten about and not and not thought about <laughs> no I think um like if people are in a position to use some of the reusable products like obviously that's that's great and yeah. I know obviously that's what we kind of touched on I'm um, where people could obviously help you if they have that kind of surplus yeah and like and I'm hugely aware that they are more expensive and you know uh, you know like as I've said to you before we've discussed um, menstrual cups before you know um, not everyone is in a position to use them for all manner of reasons um, but I think it would be really really great to see you know in our supermarket shelves just um, more sustainable products becoming mm-hmm. just way more mainstream because they are seen as yeah. more expensive at the moment and you know they aren't yeah. as as they aren't you know we're all very familiar with like as you've said the always the tampons the known brands but it would be I think it would just be f- fantastic to just see more environmentally friendly products yeah. on our shelves yeah and no, I think in relation to kind of period pants or menstrual cups like yeah. the initial cost can seem expensive and then yeah. once you've once you've gone through like three or four cycles, you're like, whoa, actually yeah. this is, it is cost effective. But obviously, as you said, like that's obviously for people that are in a position that they can afford, and, you know, to wash them and Absolutely. make sure that everything is, is done in a, in a kind of clean way. But um, yeah, I know in, in relation to like younger girls in sport and that kind of thing, actually, I think the period pants are something that's quite cool I, because it's something that's so, you know, just easy to kind of do. There's like, you know yeah. menstrual cups for someone that's 11 or 12 or 15 is just it's not it's too it's not a runner yeah no yeah, no is. i wouldn't i wouldn't promote it i wouldn't be promoting it you know to someone kind of under 18 you know you know, no, and I think also where they're familiar with it. Yeah, no, absolutely, and I think also as well with, with my daughter's um, football kit. What we've done at our club is they have navy shorts over yeah, white shorts. Yeah, yeah, and I mean, yeah. listen, it's a it's a little thing, right? But it's also yeah. quite a big thing. Um, yeah, no, it's massive. Yeah, yeah. So I think just little little changes like that are all hugely important. Yeah, yeah. No, I think um, the period pants that people find wrapping their head around them sometimes a little bit yeah. much and I'm like yeah. okay well maybe just actually try it and see what you think like if you don't like it that's fine but um like it, it's actually something that's quite easy to bring into your life and you know people yeah. think they've all these kind of thoughts about what it might be like but it's actually like I've tried them I find them totally fine um I know for you know younger people um if they're not really familiar with their cycle yet or whatever the situation may be or you know if someone's kind of 11 or 12 and kind of on the brink of maybe just getting their period it can be a really good option because yeah. um they can wear the period pants without having like a couple of days before and not be worried about oh I might get my period today or whatever situation yeah. I think it can just like and if you don't get your period grand if you do well sure you're kind of you're ready to go you're it doesn't feel any it doesn't feel any different to normal yeah. underwear anyway so um, I'm so jealous of all of this though as well because like I got my first period I was thinking about the other day um 35 years ago um 
so it's a long long time ago and at the time I just remember like getting my mum's stay like my mum giving me like a stay free pad I think at the time that was stay free was one of the big brands and it just being massive and the choice just being <laughs> limited and also yeah. you know it was that whole thing of you know I went to convent school and I think we were told you know it was the rumor at the time that if you use tampons you'd lose your virginity and all this sort of nonsense but there was an absolute like limit on what was available to you and, and mm-hmm. what you could use um and these just weren't conversations that were 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 had so i'm actually you know when i'm having these conversations with with younger women i'm like jesus this is brilliant you know and i actually can't wait to have all these conversations and and products with my girls although they are exposed to a hell of a lot of products in our house but um yeah yeah i think it's really great that you have so much choice oh is it what yeah (laughs) is it very it's very normal they're like mom you're talking about periods again um they don't I mean they're young they don't fully know what they are yet but one is coming into that kind of age soon what about obviously uh your husband is exposed to this but what about kind of educating men because I know we said about um you know in sports still a lot of coaches are men and and obviously haven't gone through it themselves so how do we kind of help educate men in relation to the topic I actually think men are brilliant on this topic. I have to be honest. I think they really really are um I know my own club Granada um you know it was just can we do this? Yes, we can. Why haven't we thought of this before? Um, and I think most of the male coaches are, are you know, pretty on it. And, you know, it was a, it was a, a, a guy's idea that we, um, that we started using Navy shorts. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. My husband is, yeah, he has a lot to put up with because he's not only dealing with my periods, he's dealing with, he pro- I think he feels half the time Ireland's periods sometimes. <laughs> but, um, you know, I think we kind of forget, like, men are brothers, they're um, partners, they're husbands, they're dads, so I think they're, I think we need to give them a bit more credit. Yeah. Um, someone else I've spoken to a lot on this topic is, is um, the TD, Chris Andrews, um, he's sport, 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 can even say it, a sports spokesman, and, you know, I think people are keen to, to just normalise it. Um mm-hmm. And I think, yeah, I think men, I actually find men are pretty, pretty good. I get li- yeah. like, like a lot of... I would find them receptive to but, yes. hearing about it and understanding. And then like we would get a lot into the, the like science and kind of talking about that a bit. Um, yeah. You know, the impact that your menstrual cycle can have on training and that. But I think, yeah. um, you know, obviously there's lots of times there can be jokes and stuff around periods. But I think oh, if yeah. you actually sit down and talk to, you know, whether it's, teenagers or you know young men or whatever um any, anyone that they can actually be open to having the conversation they're like oh well I just never experienced it myself but you know it's yeah. cool that I'm learning a bit about it you know yeah I mean there is always the like oh you must have your period if you're in a bad mood and all that kind of thing but yeah, again yeah. you know that's look it's just one of those things isn't it but I think you know if you are in a supermarket you will see the dads picking up the pads for their daughters or their wives or whatever um you know, and I and I do think we need to give them a, a little bit more credit. Thanks a million for taking the time to chat to us. I think it'd be really informative for people, and obviously we want them to check out what you're doing. So definitely check out Homeless Period Ireland on Instagram and on Twitter to find out more about what Claire is doing. Thanks, Neve.